Great. So on tonight, um, uh, for the next uh, thirty minutes, so we got to eight o'clock. Uh, let's talk. Of, let's go to the book of Matthew. We're gonna go to different scriptures, but what we want to talk about, God has put something in my heart, uh, real heavy, and because of it, we made some major changes um, uh, in the way that we do our prayer. And so the title of this is Raising Kingdom Callers, all right? Uh, Matthew uh, chapter 6, uh, Jesus begins to teach on uh, three major things. He begins to teach on um, praying, fasting, and giving. Now, we're going to focus in on praying uh, because we want to really dig into some things that God really just brought into my heart. Uh, just when I began to read the Lord prayer that most people read, you know, if you play sports, they'll have everybody reciting the Lord's prayer. Uh, most unbelievers don't really understand the Lord's prayer and why he gave it in that way. It was more of a blueprint for what Jesus wanted us to understand when we approach God versus words to recite. All right. And so while I was looking at these words, God began to talk to me about raising kingdom callers, all right? And so in Matthew chapter 6, I'm just starting in the area where he begins to pick up on prayer. In verse 5, it says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corner of the streets, that they may be seen of men, all right? So you see that. They're, they're people who have an appetite for prayer, but their appetite is not actually to talk to God. Their appetite is for people to see them uh, or to, to be seen by people to have the posture of talking to God. Their, re their appetite is really not to actually talk to God. They're really not even interested in so much of what the exchange would be like, but their appetite is, I want somebody to see me looking like I'm talking to God, all right? And so when he began to talk about this, he says these people are hypocrites. Why? Because they are put in a posture of as if them and God have this relationship, but they don't care about talking to God. They just want to look like they do. You understand what I'm saying? All right, now, so um, then you go keep going and say, very last sound to you, they have their reward. What does that mean? That means that their reward is whoever looks at them and says, wow, they're deep. They're talking to God. He said, well, that's their reward, okay? They don't get no reward for the words that they say. They don't get no reward for whatever they try to declare before God. God ain't paying no attention to their prayer. Their reward is whoever thought that they were deep because they saw them in the streets, all right? And so, um, uh, now, watch this. So, you know, um, some people are good at presentation, but low in, uh, in the quality of what they can actually bring to the table. You see what I mean? And so what God is trying to do with us as we work through these Thursdays, as we work through these exhortations, is take the quality people and work their presentation. You see what I mean? And so if I master my presentation, with my quality of person that I am, now we have a great combination for God to really bless people because a lot of people may know how to talk and you can see that in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter two where Paul said, I came not to you in excellency of speech, you know, because there's good pe there's people who know how to talk real good, but what they got to say will not edify, all right? And so, um, and so you keep going here, it said they have the reward, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly, all right? And so then, even though there is this secret uh, connection with God, there is this prayer with God that's done in the closet, there's actually a reward that's done before everybody, all right? Everybody, he will do actually answer your prayer, but will do it in an open way, all right? Verse 7, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for them much speaking. Now, what does that mean? That means that that some, pe some people, uh, when they pray, they say a lot or they say things over and over thinking that the more they say it, 
the, uh, is as if that's how they're getting God's attention. But that's not how it works. You really got to approach prayer knowing that God wants to hear you before you start. All right. Uh, have you ever uh, begged somebody? Anybody ever begged somebody? Oh, I know I have. It didn't. It didn't. It, it didn't feel good, did it? Even if they gave it to you, the fact that you had to beg for it, it didn't help, did it? Some people hold the posture, an angle, a mindset with God as if the way that He answers is by how great you beg. You see what I mean? Or how much you get on His nerve and be like, "Fine, go ahead and take it." You see what I mean? That sort of thing. All right. And uh, and of course, um, 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 because in, you know, in that part of the world where idol worship is more prevalent, like right now, you know, you'll get a lot of musicians, right? And they will actually worship idols, and then you got different clubs and different things where they worship idols. But it's more like on hush hush, where you really don't know that they're worshiping an idol. Where in Europe, in Asia in these parts of the world, their worship was out in the open. They they had temples for the idol. They had places where so it was more pronounced that they weren't worshiping Jehovah God. They were worshiping a God, a statue, uh, whether it be a statue of a king who wanted people to worship him, or whether it was some type of God. You know, you know, you you know how we. Come, you know, see movies and, and we hear things about Greek mythology and different gods. And so these type of things was very prevalent in that place. Whereas like in America, you don't hear about yeah. an idol's temple. Nobody knows. Nobody sees no idol temple. Where's the idol temple in Albany? You see what I mean? But there's different people who worship things and you don't know it and they hide it in their music and they hide the devils that they worship in their music and you don't know it, you see what I mean? And because it's not something that's very pronounced because, you know, here it kind of would be like shocking or whatever, however you want to say it, all right? And so, um, and so let's keep going here. So use not vain repetition because I ain't even got to my main point. Uh, verse eight, be not therefore like unto them for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask. Y'all see that? The father say, when you pray, know, I already know what you about to talk to me about. That's how he say pray. Now, this is the great thing about that, because you say, well, shoot, if you already know, well, you know, okay. Well, why I got to even tell you? Why don't you just go and do that thing, right? Okay, it's not, same, it's not watch this. Prayer is not to inform God because God already has the information, right? So prayer is not to inform him. Prayer is to invite him. So when you're praying, you're actually inviting God to do the thing he already want to do in your life. So when I pray, I'm inviting him to do what he already wants to do with the information he already has. So when I'm approaching him, I'm like, you already know what's going on. You, you already done something about it. And I'm inviting you to do it. You see what I mean? I'm inviting you in for it to take place. Watch this. Prayer is not trying to convince God. Oh, man, if I got to put this thing together because I don't know if he's really going to do it. No, I am praying Knowing I have found out information he already knows, he want me to know it so that I will pray it so then there can actually be an activity to take place, all right? And so, um, and so let's keep going, all right? And then we'll work on that actual statement a little bit more, all right? So be there for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. I just like that, man. I just like that. I don't like a parent who who you are talking to about something that is very important to you and they are not aware. That is bad. <laughs> if you're trying to share the deep desires of your heart and your parent is unaware, that's rough. That's like, well, if, if my actual parent don't care about what I got going on, if you're not paying attention to me, if you're not already, watch this. I'm praying and I find out when I'm actually going to see God that God is already in the trenches with me. And when I'm talking to him, I'm talking to a teammate versus uh, somebody who's 
who's uh, passively uh, standing on the outside and they really got their own stuff going on and they really like, hey man, I, I you know, what what you want? What's going on? <laughs> I just remember this. I mean, I'm not gonna tell the story, but I can literally remember uh, having interactions, you see what I mean? And thinking that the person um, really cared about what I had going on in my life. And then every time I had an interaction, it was like, uh, what we talking about? What we talking about? We talking about my life. We talking about the most precious thing. We talking about the stuff that keeps me up at night. We talking, about, you understand what I'm saying? And so, and, and many times what happens is, is people will begin to judge God or characterize God by how people treat them that are in certain positions, whether it's a mother's position or a father's position. And you begin to represent God in, in a way to people. So when people start saying, well, God is your father, you mean like the one I had or the one that wasn't there or the one that, you see what I mean? And so, and so it becomes very important for us to actually go into the scriptures so that we can characterize God properly so you can begin to take advantage of the relationship and understand in some settings, no one is gonna be as good as God. You just gotta just settle in your heart that no one's gonna be as good as God. Y'all, I literally, and I might preach it, um, was just inspired and I and I get inspired from time to time, uh, you know, in the day and then, then sometimes I'll be like, I ain't about to say this. Who is sitting and waiting for me to actually put a post on, you know, whatever. So, um, but I got inspired and I began to uh, think about the phrase, don't let the love break down. And uh, because if Jesus was here, you would get the Father's love unrestrained. You would get the Father's love, um, um, you would get it, and it wouldn't be any law in it. It wouldn't be any, uh, well, that ain't really what he would do. You know what I mean? If Jesus was here, you would get the expression of what the Father, had, the type of love the Father actually would give you, right? And, and many times when it comes to um, um, levels or you say uh, positions or you say organizational structure and they say, okay, if there was a certain amount of love or energy or whatever, as it went down, um, would it stay strong or will it phase out? Y'all know how y'all remember that game that uh, kids would play where you would start one with one person and you would tell them something, and then by the time they pass it down, it would be a whole nother thing. And God uh, has a um, has a has a uh, he has an issue with how his love gets passed down through people. And so, yes, God loves us, and he, then he uses people to actually display it, and it's very important for us to not let the love break down, which means let the love go through us the same way Jesus would if he was here. And Jesus uh, is spending a lot of time, even on earth right now, trying to find people who won't mischaracterize the love of God. They like, know I want you to do it the way I would do it. Don't love them differently. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and it's, it's very painful to build an organization if if every time a tear changes, the expression changes, the, the quality changes, the love changes. You understand what I'm saying? And so, um, and so God wants to be characterized right. That's a side note, and so we'll keep going. All right. So let's keep let's get to the main thing. So be not therefore like them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. Verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven hallowed be thy name, verse 10, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right. And so we're going to focus in here um, on thy kingdom come. I love that. Thy kingdom come. And so at the beginning of the prayer, of course, he blessed God, hallowed be thy name. And then he goes right into thy kingdom come. And, and when I when I was, you know, just thinking about the script, the script just hit me, actually. I wasn't chasing it. It chased me. You know, I love that. That's that's one great thing about when you actually get into the flow with God. God will begin to chase you with the next assignment, the next message, the next thing to do or to speak or to say or to focus in on. And so thy kingdom come 
begin to make me think about raising kingdom callers. And it, and, and I'm telling you what happened. It got on me so strong, I shifted our prayer. We used to have prayer um, every Wednesday at 5.30 in the morning um, on, a, on a conference line. And we know that's about 30 minutes or whatnot. And so, but when I heard this phrase, raising kingdom callers, and I began to hear thy kingdom come, I began to hear God saying, I want you guys to be a part of my plan to get the kingdom to earth. And I need a more aggressive approach, a more consistent approach of people who are availing themselves so that the kingdom can get to earth. Now, someone say, well, what is the kingdom? Of course, the kingdom um, is uh, God's structure, God's organization, the things that God, uh, the way that God would run the earth if uh, the earth was ran totally God's way, right? Now, here's the great thing about it. Without having studied or going to college or anything of that nature, uh, one thing that happens when you begin to pray is that because the kingdom, as the scriptures say, is within you, then as you avail yourself in prayer, the kingdom will begin to come out of you. There will, there will begin to be a level of sensitivity, a level of uh, awareness, a level of accuracy. Things will begin to come up in your heart. Words begin to come to your mind. Uh, watch this. Uh, desires will begin to spring up that God actually wants you to focus in on. Um, uh, scriptures will begin to come to mind that God may want you to pray in the moment. People uh, who have certain issues may begin to come up. You see what I mean? And uh, so you got to be aware of the fact that you're born again, that you're alive, that you used to be dead, that you were dead, but now you're alive, which means that there is something living in you uh, surpassing uh, the regular sense of life. And it is something that makes you uh, have a sensitivity and an awareness that you have to tap into. Like I was uh, sending somebody a message uh, uh, I was sending somebody a message about their yard, and when I sent the message about the yard, you know, normally that's it. I send a message, they, you know, pay, and then we move on. But I, but something hit me. How's your baby? Right? And so I sent the message. How's your baby? And then they sent back. Uh, the baby's getting ready to turn one. The baby's birthday. It was like the spirit knew something. You see what I mean? And wanted me to hone in on it. That's what I mean. So when you're when you're in this posture, things will begin to come up. People will begin to come up. Why? Because God may want you to say something about it. God may want you to decree something about it. God may want, it's something about what the kingdom wants to do. See, watch this. There's a lot of people who are projecting the agenda of the devil the agenda of fallen angels, the agenda of evil people. They're projecting it. They're casting it out. They're putting it into the world. They're brainwashing people or whatever you want to call it. But there is a greater power in what God works through prayer, through the saints. And so when we, when it comes to uh, how we speak and declare and, 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 and grab the kingdom out of the spirit world and begin to throw it into the earth, um, um, it allows us to begin to pronounce God's things, God's words. And in the middle of the conversation, I don't have my phone because it's up there. Uh, but in the middle of the conversation, I begin to speak a blessing over the baby. Now, I don't know if someone's blessed the baby, but I begin to speak a blessing. They told me the baby was named after Mother Teresa. And I forget how the name was which I thought was pretty cute. And I, and I began to speak a blessing over the baby's hands, that the baby's hands would bless the world. And, and see, there's something about uh, the way that, the, watch this, there's something about the ability that God has put in every believer to bring the kingdom into the earth. 
And so that's why God uh, want us to raise people who can call the kingdom into being. So whatever part of the kingdom that God has assigned for us, he want us to begin to call it into being, right? Like there was a time where this place did not exist, where this ministry didn't exist, and someone had to call it into being, right? And so then, then watch this, uh, and then of course we have a, a mothers here, and so um, there has to be a level of travail, it has to be a level of, of a posture where you say, God wants me to birth something. God, there is something that the city needs, that my family needs, that the county needs, that the area needs, that God wants us to birth. And I don't know if it's going to happen on Monday at 12 or Friday at 12 or Wednesday, but God wants something to kick off. He, he, has, he wants to disturb the kingdom of darkness in some kind of way. And he's like, I want to know if, do I have anybody sensitive enough to grab hold to it, to begin to call the kingdom down? Is that what he's saying? He's saying, now I'm not saying just say thy kingdom come. I want someone who literally is dedicated to calling the kingdom down, okay? And so that's what we're going to do. That's why we shifted the prayer. Um, that's why we shifted how we're doing. He said, man, what, what we doing? We praying every day. Hallelujah. Yeah, we praying every day. And you know, here's the crazy thing, thing, right? We, so we don't, we, we start, we just kick it off. And you know, I, I like to kick it. Then I talk about it. <laughs> it's like, well, no shit, you talk about it first. I try, y'all. It just don't work like that. I'll be like, let's start now. Okay. Then we'll tell everybody about it on Thursday. <laughs> so, and so, but it's like, um, it, 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 but it's, it's, but the reality, and it's like, I feel this um, um, awareness or this, it's almost like my spirit get hyped somewhere around 11 o'clock. It's like an alarm that goes off that says almost 12, <laughs> almost 12, almost 12. And you see what I mean? And, and then y'all, see, watch this. See, some muscles can't get built up, and, and now I'm talking about that, but some muscles can't get built up until you exercise. And, and watch this. How do you know how strong your muscle is to speak and declare things if you had exercising? And so there's a level of, 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 of exercising that we're growing to. And someone says, man, I can't pray. I can't pray all that. Okay, but just get going. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get going. Get, begin to develop it. Begin to, begin to open up your spirit. Begin to open up yourself to the Lord so that he can, so that he can begin to good. God Almighty, I mean, I'm just talking all the time, Jesus. Jesus. All right, and so um, <laughs> let me just, all right, so listen to this scripture. This is why, why I said, why is my voice important? Because as Psalm 15, 115 and 16 said, the heavens, even the heavens, or so that's Psalms 115 and 16, the heaven, even the heavens of the Lord, but the earth has been given to the children of men. And so because he's given the earth to us, it's really not so much saying, hey, I handed you the earth, go do what you want to do. But it's more saying there's a level of jurisdiction, there's a level of authority that man has. That's why once God made Adam, he began to let Adams call things into being. He began to let Adam name things. He began to let Adam uh, uh, shape the world. You see what I mean? The structure, the order, how things would be done. Now, what made God mad that he made man? Because their imaginations were evil. So he could not have, he could not find many people who would bring the kingdom, bring his order, bring his way into the world. And that's why he killed them all off and self ate them. You see what I mean? With Noah. And so, and and uh, because Noah found grace in his sight and then he began to continue the way. All right. And so the heaven, even the heavens of the Lord, but the earth has he given to the children of men. So it is very important that even though God has a great agenda to be birthed, it's important for us to give ourselves over to the moment to actually speak it out. Yes, the, the God has something that he wants to do in the world, whether it's your world, your family world, the city. I, let's just deal, let's watch this. Let's deal with broad into personal, right? If you deal broad into personal, you're, 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 you're going to get more accomplished, right? And so, so God got something he wants for the nation 
he want for the world. Watch this, y'all. When God put this on my heart, I didn't know there were drone strikes. I didn't know that Iran was shooting missiles at Israel. I didn't know it. God had put it on my heart. I called uh, uh, Sister Jackson up because she's been running our prayer to talk about what I believe God, how God wanted to shield them. And then I saw that with drone strikes. I said it was almost like the spirit was like, I need somebody on it. I need somebody to get on post. I need somebody to begin to do some things that may seem a little bit uh, aggressive or a little bit, okay, that's a lot, you know, whatever you want to call it. But then I started seeing it was really the hotbed. It was the place where everything that God wants to happen will spring up from, okay? And so, and God has put the kingdom in our mouths. He's put something that the world needs and he put it in our mouth. And he will give us a level of sensitivity, a level of awareness so that we can say it. And it's something about being in the midst of prayer time and God and the Holy Spirit bringing things to your mind to say, bringing things to your mind to speak out. And you may think it don't mean that. But I tell you one thing, when the children of Israel were getting ready to go to the promised land and a man hired a prophet to curse them, it meant something. And the scripture said, that Balak, whoever, was Balak and Balaam, I can't remember, maybe Balaam was the one who was supposed to curse him. But the scriptures say that God, now watch this, y'all. Everybody say, I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet. But that's, it's the truth. Don't get nervous. Don't worry. You ain't going to have no title behind your name today. <laughs> but watch this. In the Old Testament, uh, that word prophet meant something. There was a man who God God, he, he, he wanted to get him. And he sent the young prophet to go and do a assignment and told him, don't talk to nobody, don't eat with nobody, don't do nothing. Now you do what I tell you to do and come back. Well, the man was like, I'm a prophet too. You know, on their way back, he tried to do what God told him to do. Well, I'm a prophet too. And the Lord told me for you to stay. Soon as the man stayed, the spirit of the Lord came up on the, the nasty prophet and he said, that because you didn't obey God, you're going to die. Boom. And he died. Because God didn't pray about the prophet. And the scriptures say when it came to Balaam, it said, the scriptures say, whoever he cursed was cursed. And whoever he blessed was blessed. It was so strong and pronounced that the Lord would not allow this man to curse the children of Israel. He looked at him every time, every angle he looked at him, the Lord would not allow him to curse him because the Lord had given him such an authority that whoever he cursed, they were cursed. Can you imagine? That God has put in your mouth the ability to bless and curse people. We don't understand it. And so then we use a lot of things in vain like Jesus. You know, or we'll, we'll use things and we'll use it not understanding what God has put in our mouth. But if we ever became fully aware of what God has put in us, then we will understand why he dedicates certain things to us so that we can begin to uh, uh, affect change. Okay? Say, how can we affect change? This is how we're going to affect change. We're going to begin to call the kingdom. There's things that God wants to be said. There are things that God wants to be released, and we're going to help him do it. He's going to drop things in us, and he say, well, I want to say it, but you got to say it. Do y'all not know that before Jesus heard from the Father, and John heard from the Father, this is my beloved son, and whom I'm well pleased, that Jesus first prayed, Y'all, most people don't know that because they just see him coming out the water. But the scripture say he was baptized and prayed, and then the heaven opened. What? That's what happened. See, when we see, there's something special that happens when we get in this posture, and when you start calling the king, the heaven open, and things begin to come down. The voice of God begins to come, angels begin to come, things begin. Okay, all right, I, I got all kinds of scripture for it. All right, let's 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 look at some of these. All right. Okay, and so let's look at uh, let's look at John chapter one, one and fourteen. Okay, uh, it says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Uh, that's John one and one. In the beginning was the word. Now watch this. Oh, we going. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Y'all see that? In John one and one, in verse fourteen, and the word was made flesh. Everybody say the word was made flesh. That's what happened. You will call the kingdom, and there will be word in heaven that's coming down. You say, how did Jesus get here? The prophets 
prophesied them down. Prophet after prophet would keep calling. They were calling them into existence. God would give one a word and one a word and another one a word and another word. And they kept calling them until he had to show up. Until an angel had to show up to Mary and say, Holy Ghost, get ready to drop that baby in. I know people have called you into existence. All right. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. All right. And so. And so he said, and the word was made flesh, verse 14, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full and grace and truth. What am I saying? Is that, is that God has given us the ability to call things in the heavens down to the earth, all right? Intercession is normally taught in the way of us interceding for other people, all right? We want to become aware of our first position of intercession, which is, uh, which is interceding with God. See what I mean? Most times when you think, think about intercession, people are like, well, I'm interceding for them, I'm interceding for them. The first place of our intercession is us interceding with God. When we call the kingdom, us and God, we are interceding with him. We are, we are helping him get his agenda in. The first place where we give ourselves over to be used, give ourselves over to be proxy is with his agenda. Now, that may mean helping other people, but it's primarily centered around getting what he want done down. You see what I mean? Why does God make bare the scripture? Why did God open up revelation? Because he knows the people who are getting it are actually going to help his agenda get down. Y'all understand what I'm saying? All right. And so, um, and so that's what we want. More, uh, more, more than we should pray for other people's words, desires, plans, uh, need to make flesh, we should give ourselves to make God's will become flesh. All right. So more than we should pray for other people's words, desires, plans, needs to be made flesh, we should give ourselves to make God's will become flesh. And that's what happens. When we pray, there is something that did not exist that is God's will and it will appear. That's what happens. You will, you will get to pray, and God will use your mighty words to bring something into existence. All right? Okay, now, let's keep going. All right? In Luke chapter 2, verse 25 through 38. All right? It says, Behold, in Jerusalem there was a man, uh, uh, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. All right, and the consolation of Israel mean is just saying he was waiting on Jesus to come. He was waiting on the Messiah to show up. They didn't know uh, exactly uh, who he was, all right? But that's who he was waiting on. And the scripture said, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ, all right? Verse 27, and he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law, meaning after eight days they would bring the child in and dedicate him to God, that sort of thing, circumcise him, okay? And so, um, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all the people. All right? Uh, a, light, uh, a light to light the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. All right? And Joseph and his mother marvel at those things which was spoken of him. All right? So you got this first half. Uh, this man, the Holy Ghost was on him. It was revealed to him that before he died, he was going to hold Jesus. He was going to see him. He picked him up and blessed the baby. Y'all see that? Like, watch this. If the Holy Ghost was on him, that means, you know how people say from Malachi to Matthew, it was 400 years, it was silent, there was no open visions, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, I don't know exactly uh, all the details of why they say this, but the Holy Ghost was working with somebody. There were some people who were dedicated to, to, to Jesus showing up. Y'all remember when I told y'all that when the Lord come back, we ain't going to be caught off guard? <laughs> when the Lord showed up to the earth, there were some people who was waiting on them. That's what this scripture is saying. Everybody wasn't caught off guard. 
Somebody was like, I am coming to the temple every day because Jesus is going to show up one of these days. You see what I mean? Why did we going to show up to the church every day? We show up to the because one of these days, Jesus is going to show up. And something's going to happen. And they're like, what the world went on? Man, they was over there. It happened around 12. Around 12, 15, something jumped off. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. See, 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 and, 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 and many times because you can't see, you can't see how much uh, something will shift uh, and change when it first starts, then you don't put the right significance on it, not knowing that this thing is a critical piece later on. It just got to get going. It got to get built. You see what I mean? And so, um, and so let's keep reading. So we can get to the real meat of this, all right? And so, uh, uh, verse 35. Uh, yeah, a sword. Let me see. Simeon blessed them, all right? Okay. Let's look at verse 36. And there was one Anna, a prophetess. Oh, come on, prophetess. A daughter of, uh, how you say that? Anybody? Pen, penny, I don't know. Feneo, all right. There we go. <laughs> All right. Of the tribe of Asher, she was of great age. She's an old woman. And she lived, watch this, with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow about four score and 40 years. So for 44 years, she was a widow, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. Watch this. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord. Likewise with what? With the man. With the one man. She was up, she was locked in there with him, right? And locked still. Gave like uh uh she coming in the instant gave thanks likewise to the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for the redemption in Jerusalem. There was a woman. What did she do? She was in the temple. What did she do? She fasted and prayed. What was she fasting and praying for? For Jesus to show up. And the day he showed up, they knew, watch this, y'all. He was a baby. That's like us looking at Charles saying, Jesus, this, this, is, this, is the, this is the savior of the world. You know you got to be in the spirit to know that. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Watch this. We're literally going to become so aware of things. You're going to be able to see who people really are and call them into being. You're going to see somebody and they ain't going to be, they ain't going to look men like what God really made them. And you're going to look at them and be like, this is who you are. And when you say it, the curse of whatever was on them is going to fall off their life and they're going to begin and whatever is going to begin to come out of them. You see what I mean? That's what's going to happen. All right. And so this is why God does these things. All right. Let's look at a few more scriptures and then uh, we'll shut this down. All right. Uh, uh, Watch this. I, I say this amen. God gives words to preach and God gives words to pray. All right. Luke uh, 3 and 2. Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, let's look at Luke 3, 4 through 6. Um, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you to where the Lord make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and every cricket shall be straight, and the roof shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see uh, the salvation of God. All right? And so um, let's go there. Let's, let's go here. Let's go to Luke chapter 3. Um, Oh, okay. Here we go. Luke, let's look at verse 21 and 22. Now, when the people, now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was open. My God, man. That's what God is telling us. He the reason why a part of the reason why he shifted us is because he wanted a place where there, a ladder would be set up. Where the heaven will be open and a ladder will be set up where angels can go up and down, where his word can go up and down. See, when when see, watch this. John was the authority. He was he, he was holding 
God's agenda. Right. And so Jesus had to pass through John's uh, ministry in order for God to launch him off. And so, and so, and so when he got baptized and came up praying, that's when the Lord uh, was, could, could, could take what he was doing to the next place. But John had to prophesy about him, about this is the Christ, all right? So it says, when he prayed, the heaven was open, and the Holy Ghost descended in the bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven and said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased, all right? And so Jesus prayed during the time of baptism, the heaven released the Holy Spirit and the voice of God. Man, I love that. Man, we're going to be praying, and the Lord going to release the Holy Spirit on people. We're going to be praying, and the Lord going to release his voice on people. That's what that's what he's saying, all right? And so the creative power to recreate the earth has been released again at this moment. Can y'all see that? That 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 watch this. Oh God. That's that's what I saw. That's what I saw. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth, and the earth was out form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved or hovered or brooded like a hand upon the face of the water. And God said, let there be light. There was the Holy Spirit, and then there was his voice. Y'all see that? And so when Jesus was getting ready to reshape the earth again, the two things that came was the Holy Ghost and the voice. Y'all see that? So whenever God want to reshape, he brings the Holy Spirit and the voice. To what he did. He gave us his spirit and he also not only gave us his spirit, but he gave us his voice. Why? So we could recreate the earth. Everybody, watch this. I don't pray with my voice. I pray with God. That's what he's saying. He, so that's what makes my praying significant because I am praying God's will, which means I'm using his voice. Yes, I'm using my voice, but I'm using his will, which means it's really his voice. Y'all understand what I'm saying, all right? Okay. Okay. All right? So, let's see. Let me just say these things, and then we'll wrap up. All right? Prayer is a contact point with God and man. A peak of transmission and impartation. Oh, God. <laughs> this thing will hit me, man. While we were praying today, this thing will hit me. It's a peak of transmission and impartation. Watch this. The greatest things of past in intimacy. They were, how, how, they, how they passed on you? They were talking to you. Or they were touching you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and those points of entry, those gateways, those doors, is where there was transmission. That, watch this. You can be in the house with prayers. Watch this. Are you on the line with prayers? And there's transmissions. There is impartation. Things are getting passed to you. You understand what I'm saying? Is that, yeah, you, we talking to God, but then God is dropping things. God is passing things. You understand what I'm saying? My goodness, man. It's the peak of it. It is. It, see, it's like how you fall in love with him. I was just listening to him talk, and you fell in love. Y'all understand what I'm saying? See, see, watch this. You'll be talking to God. He falling more in love with you, which you like. How's that possible? But I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm trying to give you the, the energy of it, right? You talking to him, he like, I love you. That's what you feel the energy, and he talking to you, and you like, I love you. It's like it's the transmission of it. It's like, man, how you feel? Oh my God, we just be talking, and in the midst of the interaction, there's a it's in the peak of it. You see what I mean? All right, my goodness, man. And then where prayer is, a ladder. I talked about that. Uh, uh, ministry muscles build expectation or just energy is good. All right, that's enough. Let's pray. Father Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for um, um, raising kingdom callers. You've put in our voice the ability, you put in our mouth the ability to call the invisible, precious kingdom into the earth. Your righteous ways, all of your righteousness. Um, Matthew 6, 33, for seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Father, the things that you've put in us that are of the kingdom. Lord, your word, your ways, your mindset. Father, as we pray, 
Lord God, we are bringing the kingdom into reality. We thank you for it. My God, Romans 8 talks about the earth groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Father, we thank you for even when we don't know what to say, there is an intercessor, intercessor lodged inside of us called the Holy Ghost who begin to give groanings that cannot be uttered. Father, I thank you, my God, for a dramatic change in the enemy's advantage in this area because of apostolic kingdom callers. Father, I thank you, my God, because during prayer meetings, my God, things are going to shift, my God, in power structure. My God, there are going to be legs broken in the spirit. My God, where things have been in place, there's, there's going to be spirits, my God, moved out of high seats. Lord God, we thank you, Lord. My God, wherever corruption is, Lord, my God, we're bringing in the kingdom of your righteousness. We thank you, Lord. My God, move by your spirit. We thank you for the angels moving. We thank you, Lord, my God, for how you're going to use us, how you're going to flow through us, how, my God, that how the world is going to be blessed by the presence of your kingdom. We give your name to praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen.